Welcome back to the Avatar series right here at Comic Storian, your number one spot for dramatic readings of your favorite comic books. I'm Dan, your narrator, and today we are going to cover part two of Avatar Smoke and Shadow. Let's begin. Aang tapped against the bowl, signaling the end of meditation time. Xing Ying goes over waking up Jingbo, who once again apologizes to Aang for having fallen asleep. As the acolytes leave, Aang turns back and thanks Iroh for allowing them to use his tea shop once again. Any time, Avatar, tea and meditation go so well together, the elderly tea master smiles. Sokka and Katara pop their heads in, asking if Aang is ready to go. Just finished, Aang tells his friends. Perfect timing! We just got everything packed on Appa, Sokka tells him. Iroh comes out asking the group where they are going. To the South Pole! It'll be our first time back since the end of the war, Sokka tells him. The kids explain that they're heading back to help rebuild. Plus, Aang is looking forward to penguin sledding. And to eat some of Auntie Ashuna's seal jerky, Sokka whispers lovingly. What? You hate Auntie Ashuna's seal jerky, Katara yells at her brother. You mean I hated Auntie Ashuna's seal jerky. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. He tells her as they begin to walk towards Appa. But Aang stops short, surprised by the arrival of a messenger hawk. Reading it, he explains to the others that Zuko is having trouble with spirits and needs the Avatar. Why don't you guys come with me? I'm sure it won't take long, he tells them. It's Spirit World stuff. When's the last time Spirit World stuff didn't take long? Sokka asks. Katara nods, agreeing that their father is waiting for them. And so Katara and Aang hug, with the Avatar apologizing. Nothing to be sorry about, it just comes with dating the Avatar, she whispers to him. Katara and Sokka watch Appa and Aang fly away, before heading to the docks to find a ship home. It isn't long before Aang is walking into a meeting room in the Fire Lord's palace. Zuko thanks his friend for coming, and Aang once again greets Mei. Wow, this is great! Does this mean you guys are back together? He asks. And this is Kylo, May's boyfriend, Zuko says, interrupting Aang. Oh, I mean, uh, you know what I said earlier? By back together, I meant, uh, Aang stutters. Please, keep talking, because things aren't awkward enough as it is, May sighs. Zuko interrupts again, introducing Aang to the other person in the room, Constable Sung. He is leading the investigation into the kidnapping, Zuko explains. Sung bows to the Avatar, honored to meet him. Wait, kidnapping? Aang asks. Quickly, Mei explains that her brother was kidnapped by the Kamurakage, informing Aang that they are dark spirits from her home. Several reports of dark spirit sightings came in from all over the capital city, though Tom Tom was the only abductee, Sung explains. Aang begins to ask a question, but is interrupted as Yukino barges in. The guard apologizes, but Zuko waves them off, explaining that he is the abductee's father. Yukino walks in, throwing accusations around, and he demands that Zuko grow a spine and deal with these dark spirits. Everyone knows the spirit world begins to act up when the human world is weak, Yukino shouts. Aang tries to argue, but Yukino isn't listening. He suggests that Zuko place a curfew over the city and assign a special task force to hunt and fight the dark spirits. Take down just one of them and we'll show the spirits that humans aren't meant to be trifled with, he tells him. Aang steps in, explaining that a curfew will just make people afraid and that a task force wouldn't be able to fight the spirits anyway. Let's just figure out what happened to Tom Tom and then we'll know what to do next, he tells his friend. What the Avatar says makes sense, Mei agrees. Zuko closes his eyes, pondering for a few moments. Wise advice, Avatar. Constable, please escort Yukino out, he says. Yukino begins to shout at Zuko, telling him that he is unworthy of the throne. Imposter! Imposter! He begins to yell. Zuko is shocked by the words, and he quickly turns to Mei, asking if her father was part of the attack by the new Ozai society. Not that I know of, she tells him after a brief pause. Hmm, I thought I recognized his voice, Zuko tells her. Aang steps in, asking Mei to tell him everything she knows about the Kamurakage. 
I've already told you, they're just an old legend, May tells him. Zuko nods, knowing a place where they can find out more about old legends. As Zuko and Aang walk out of the room, Kylo turns to Mei. He asks why she lied about her father, that Yukino should be in jail. But Mei shakes her head, explaining that when they find Tom Tom, her father will be the safest place for him. With this, she walks out of the room to join Zuko and Aang. Meanwhile, Constable Sung is escorting Yukino out of the palace. Yukino finally explains to Sung that this is just the beginning that the dark spirits see Zuko as weak. If I were you, I'd keep a close eye on your boy, Yukino warns. After boarding Appa, the group flies over to the Fire Sage's capital temple in the surrounding mountains. You've been here before, Mei? Kylo asks in awe of the vast structure. Once, an ex thought it would be romantic to share a meal over the burial site of his ancestors, she explains. And he was right. It was romantic, Zuko smiles. So, uh, you guys, how about we, you know, get going on uh, whatever it is we came here to do? Aang laughs nervously. Inside, they are greeted by great sage Shiu. He bows before the Fire Lord and the Avatar, and quickly he begins to ramble about several new forms of meditation that he has developed before Zuko interrupts him. I'd love to hear more, Shiu, I swear. But right now, my friends and I need to get into the Dragonbone Catacombs, he explains. Xiu sighs and walks over to the Great Seal on the floor. Stamping his feet, he draws fire around him, activating the seal and creating a great staircase that spirals down into the floor. Creating fire to light their way, the group quickly descends into the darkness. Meanwhile, Constable Sung sits and eats dinner with his wife. She is telling him a story of their son, but he is barely listening, thinking about the words Yukino spoke to him. He suddenly pauses in explaining to his wife when he hears footsteps from his son's room. He rushes forward, discovering smoke seeping from beneath the door. With a smash, he kicks in the door, discovering the Kamurakage stealing his son. Release my son now, he snaps, pulling free a knife. You heard the man! his wife adds, coming up behind him with her own knife drawn, ready to protect her child. The spirits watch them for a moment, before one of them rushes forward. The parents try to fight, but the Kamurakage dodge around their strikes, filling the room with smoke. Both parents fall to the floor coughing, and when the smoke finally begins to dissipate, their son is gone. Within the catacombs, the group is moving forward passing the bones of dragons and images of Zuko's cranky-looking ancestors. Aang is confused, asking how this will help them learn about the spirits. Zuko stops, gesturing to a mural on the wall and explaining that it tells the history of the Fire Nation, including its myths and legends, Zuko tells him. As they continue forward, they are stopped by a door with four dragon heads on it. When Sozin came into power, he ordered the rest of the corridor to be sealed off, as if Fire Nation's history began with him, Zuko tells them. Zuko indicates the door, believing that what they need to learn is on the other side. Aang studies the door, believing that the dragon heads appear to be the locking mechanism. The two of them drop into bending stances, ready themselves, and launch fire at the wall. Back in the palace, Suki and Tai Li are watching over the castle walls. Tai Li has heard reports of other Kamurakage stealing children and believe that they should be in the city to help, but Suki shakes her head, ordering that they watch the palace while they wait for Zuko. Ursa overhears these words and fear grips her. She quickly makes her way through the chambers, finding Norin in another room. Where's Kiyi? Why aren't you with her? She asks. Norn explains that their daughter is sleeping in the next room, and Orsa runs through, telling him that she has the worst feeling. Yet as they open the door, they both find the young girl asleep in her bed. Oh, thank goodness you're safe, Ursa whispers, holding her sleeping daughter tightly. Within the catacombs, Aang and Zuko continue to launch fire at the door, but to no avail. Finally, Kylo interrupts him, having his own idea. He borrows Mei's throwing knives, believing the lock to be in the dragon's nose and not its mouth. Wait, you're going to pick the dragon's noses? That seems awfully disrespectful, 
Not to mention gross, Aang points out. Kylo ignores him, turning back to Mei. Babe, can you help me out here? He asks. Babe, Aang whispers to Zuko. But the Fire Lord just looks at him sideways. You're not one to talk, Aang, he whispers back. Zuko watches as Mei and Kylo work very closely together to pick the locks on all four heads. Finally, the door slides open, revealing the corridor beyond. Back in his home, Yukino is awakened by a knock at the door. He opens it, discovering Constable Sung. The constable quickly fills Yukino in on his son being kidnapped, along with several other children throughout the capital. Sung tells Yukino that he was right, and they can't wait for Zuko's response. They must act now. And I know just how to get started, Yukino smiles. In the catacombs, the group has discovered the mural depicting the Kamurakage. Creepy! Aang shudders as he looks at the smoky creatures. Mei reaches into a shelf, pulling free the scroll that tells the history of the Kamurakage. And Zuko steps close to her, offering her his light. Mei looks down and begins to read. Long before the Fire Nation came into existence, warlords ruled the Fire Islands. They fought each other for territory, with the common people often getting caught in the middle. The worst of these warlords was a man named Toes. He would demand annual tributes from all of the people within his territories. And one year, a village refused. To teach them a lesson, Toes had all the children from the village kidnapped. And the children were never seen again, and the mothers died in sadness. How horrible! Where was my past life in all of this? Aang asks. Maybe this was before the first Avatar, Zuko wonders. Soon after the mother's deaths, dark spirits began to haunt Toes and his men. They would come in the middle of the night, stealing the children. And out of fear, Toes' men abandoned the warlord. But even when his regime had collapsed, the dark spirits would come. Their sadness was insatiable. Eesh! Maybe Sozin kept ancient Fire Nation history locked away because it's so depressing, Aang chimes in. Suddenly, they are interrupted as a wisp of smoke emits from the mural. Moving through the dark passageways, Aang doesn't think twice and quickly follows it deeper into the catacombs. Back in the city, Yukino and Sung are moving through the streets, trying to enforce the curfew on a father and his son that were working late. They are interrupted as a group begins to pass them, carrying torches and chanting, A strong nation is a safe nation. A strong nation is a safe nation, they chant. Sung nods, explaining that they are a safe nation society. His own police force isn't enough, and the militia has volunteered to help. Suddenly, there is a piercing scream in the night, and a woman comes to the window, shouting that her baby has been stolen. The group looks up, seeing three of the dark spirits hovering over a house, smoke billowing beneath their cloaks. What are you waiting for? Attack! Yukino shouts to the militia. Back in the catacombs, the group is rushing to catch up with the wisp of smoke. Aang stops short as the smoke disappears into another dragon statue. Oh, monkey feathers, he whispers. I bet this is another lock. Kylo, uh, think he could? He begins to ask. The young man nods, stepping forward and picking the second lock. The door slides open, revealing a staircase leading down. Looks like a crypt, Aang tells them. I'm not going down there, May states simply. Aang begins to move, asking Kylo to follow him in case anything else needs to be unlocked. Sure, Kylo says, glancing back at his girlfriend with Zuko. In a matter of moments, Zuko and May are alone. So... They both say together, Kylo seems nice, Zuko tells her, trying to fill the awkward silence. He is, she agrees. It's good to see you happy, or at least happy-ish, but I have to be honest. I miss you, Mei, he tells her. Mei turns, angry. She asks why Zuko would say something like that to her. She tells him that they had their chance. Tell me, do you feel the same way about him that you felt about me, he asks her. May tells him that he broke her heart twice, and that she let him. She tells him that Kai Lo loves her more than she likes him, and that's exactly how it needs to be. Because I won't ever let myself get hurt like that again, she says. Aang and Kai Lo find themselves in the crypt. 
the wisp of smoke appears again, but this time solidifies before them. Greetings, Avatar, the spirit Kamurakage says. You're one of the Kamurakage from long ago, Aang states simply. The spirit nods. For centuries, my sisters and I haunted the warlords of the Fire Islands. For their crimes, we hunted them. We hunted them until islands were united into a single nation. The first Fire Lord, the one who rests in this crypt, brought the warlords to justice and ushered in an era of peace. Our sadness receded and we never again set foot in the human world. The Kamurakage explains. Hang is confused, but then why return now? Why are you haunting people again? He asks. The Kamurakage hovers before him until it finally answers. I repeat, Avatar, from the time of the first Fire Lord until this moment, we have not entered your world, it whispers. A short time later, Appa is flying the group back to the capital city. Aang repeats himself, explaining that the spirits aren't the same as the past. So they're different spirits that look like the Kamurakage? Zuko asks. Maybe, Aang nods. As they fly over the city, though, they are shocked to discover the militia moving through the streets, still chanting. They land quickly, with Zuko rushing over to Constable Sung. What is the meaning of this? he demands. Yukino steps forward, explaining that the spirits have become restless and kidnapped several children from the city. Yukino smiles, explaining that since the Fire Lord refused to do anything, the Safe Nation Society is risking their lives to keep the streets safe. But how do you get this many volunteers to assemble this late at night? Aang asks. And Yukino ignores the question, explaining that ten minutes ago the society fought off a group of spirits and saved a child. Hate to break it to you, but those probably weren't spirits, Aang explains. Preposterous! I saw them with my own eyes. Humans don't move like that, Yukino shouts. Mei steps up behind him, her eyes narrowing at her father. You're hiding something. I can tell by the way you're talking. What's your secret, father? She asks. None of this matters, as Zuko turns back to Sung. Constable Sung, truly, I am sorry about your son, and we will find him, I promise you. But all of this was done without my authority, and I will not be undermined. Until further notice, you are suspended from your post, he tells the constable. Sung starts to argue, but stops and bows before his fire lord. What do you think you're doing? Constable Sung is a good man, Yukino hisses, coming up to Zuko. And you, Yukino, this society of yours will disband immediately or you will all face arrest, Yuko shouts. For a moment, it seems as if Yukino will argue, but finally he turns and orders his volunteers to return to their homes. Aang comes up to his friend, saying what he did was harsh, and Zuko nods. I hated to do it, but I had no choice, he explains. The woman whose baby the Safe Nation Society saved comes up to them in the streets. Fire Lord Zuko, with all due respect, the Safe Nation Society just saved my daughter. They're heroes, which is more than I can say about you, she tells him. Aang and Zuko return to the palace on Appa while Mei fumes in the streets about what Zuko did. When Kylo finally brings her home, she watches him leave. As she looks down in her hands, which holds a picture of her and Zuko together, and quietly, she puts it back in its drawer. A short time later, Zuko walks through the corridors of the palace when he hears a whisper. Help me, Zuzu. She's holding me tight with her cold hands. I'm suffocating. Kiyi whispers from her bed, Ursa clutching her tightly. Would you like to sleep in the other room? Zuko asks, helping his sister free herself. He puts her on his shoulders, walking through the halls and telling her about his day. He puts her in the other bed, bidding her a good night. Meanwhile, Constable Sung's son finally wakes up. He finds himself in a strange room, surrounded by other kids. The child is scared, but Tom Tom eases his fears. Our moms and dads will be here soon, one of the other girls tells him with a smile. The boy asks how they know and they point to the door as it opens. 
Because Tom Tom's dad is here. Our moms and dads can't be far behind, she explains with a smile as Yukino enters the room. The man smiles at the children, telling them that they need to go to bed so that their parents can come and see them. Yukino tucks his son in, telling him that it'll be just a few more days until he can see his mother and sister again. My friends and I are going to make the Fire Nation strong and safe again. By staying here, you and the other children are doing your part, he tells him. At the palace, Zuko looks up at the night sky. Suki comes out, reporting that the palace is secure, and the two begin to talk in the night air, and Zuko admits to be worried about Tom Tom, that he hopes the trauma won't affect him. He stares over Suki's shoulder though, seeing smoke coming from Kiyi's room. They both rush through the palace, others joining them as they find the room empty. Aang and Zuko lean out the window, finding the spirits trying to escape over the rooftops. Put her down, now, Zuko shouts, and they leap to attack the spirits, but one lashes out and kicks Aang. That definitely felt like a human foot. Try chi blocking them, Tai Li, he calls. I'm trying, I'm trying, the Kyoshi warrior shouts as she tries to attack the shifting spirit. Suki grabs the spirit with Kiyi, but the Kamurakage tosses the young girl to another. They try to give chase, but smoke suddenly swirls around them, causing them all to choke and cough. Aang, acting fast, blows all the smoke away, and the last of the Kamurakage tries to escape, but Zuko hits them with a blast of fire, knocking them to the ground. That's it! It's over! Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, he hisses, stalking over to the fallen spirit. Fire ignites in his hands as he steps over the Kamurakage. Where'd your friends take my sister? Same place as the other kids? Answer me, he demands. The Kamurakage shifts, revealing a hand beneath her swirling cloak. Lightning begins to crackle, and she lashes out, lightning flying from her hands. And Zuko gasps, Azula? And that is the end of part two of Avatar The Last Airbender, Smoke and Shadow. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please be sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon to get those notifications, and leave a comment down below about how excited you are for Smoke and Shadow Part 3. If you want to find more of me, Dan, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at DanTProducer, or on Twitch at Silu91, that's twitch.tv slash C-Y-L-O-O-9-1. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you want to support us even more, you can join our YouTube membership or go over to Patreon, patreon.com slash comicstorian, where for $2 you get access to all of our podcasts, early access content, and much more. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you again next time for part three.